Hector Cooper and Fatih Tarim have been getting their respective sides ready for the 250th Milan derby. New faces abound for both Inter and AC Milan, but there's nothing new about this fierce city rivalry. The Milan derby dates all the way back to 1908. Can Inter climb back into top spot, or will AC Milan have the last laugh? Welcome to our coverage of the Derby della Madonnina, the Derby of the Little Madonna, as it's known here in Milan. Inter against AC Milan, it's always a very special occasion. Tommy Smith joining me, Derek Ray, for commentary. Even more special tonight because Inter have a chance to go back on top of the table and they're looking for a revenge. The worst defeat they ever received at home was in the last Derby, 6-0. So they want to come back and beat AC Milan today. Yes, that was a humbling experience for Inter, who currently lie in second because Shock Troops Kievo won earlier on. But we'll take you back to round seven in Serie A and Inter's match away to Udinese. A tricky fixture on paper, but first blood here to Inter, the goal by Nicola Ventola. But after that, Tommy, they had to withstand a fair amount of pressure. Yeah, well, things get really nasty here. Dalmat gets a red card. Hasta la vista, baby. He's out of there, and uh, that really puts them in a hole. A red card for the Frenchman, Stéphane Dalmat. As a result, he's suspended for this derby. But near the end, a dubious penalty award. Ivan Cordoba, a judge to have fouled Roberto Sosa. The penalty was given. And there was Davi Di Michele to equalise. 1-1, the final score. Inter still undefeated in the league, however. What about AC Milan? Well, they fancied their chances at home to the bottom club, Venezia. And scored first. A goal from, you've guessed it, Andrei Shevchenko. But then a stunning comeback by Venezia. Well, a former Milan player gets himself involved here. Monero, as the ball comes across, he just rises up, and with a powerful header, it's 1-1. And that's how it finished. Wins, however, for both Milan sides during the week in the UEFA Cup. Now, the results are in from all the other matches in round eight. What catches your eye there, Tommy? Well, certainly, Kiev a 1 0 over Parma. That's a huge one. Udinese come up with five goals, and Roma also come up with five goals. So there was a lot of goals, but the game that there was only one goal and was the most important one because it pushes Kiev up to the very top of the table, and Udinese are 5 1 winners. That's a big, big win for them. As goals are plenty in the Scudetto race on this Sunday, as Tommy said, Kievo are in top spot, but that might not be the case after the derby this evening. Can you believe it? They're only 15 years in existence as a professional football club, and they're sitting looking down at all the giants of Syria. Well, the Kievo players will be sitting back and enjoying the derby. We'll do likewise here on ESPN. It's Inter versus AC Milan. We'll have it for you right after the break. Welcome back to our coverage of the Milan Derby here on ESPN. This game was supposed to have kicked off some 10 minutes ago, but a delay here because of a lighting problem. Let's look again at the Inter lineup. No real surprises there sprung by Hector Cooper. Well, they've uh, four at the back and uh, pretty formidable looking out, but three up front for uh, AC Milan and Zaghi Shevchenko and Rui Costa in the hole behind them. Three at the back, Alta Corta, Larison and Maldini. Away we go. Better late than never. And it's Inter attacking the goal to our right. Anxious to protect their unbeaten record in Serie A. Given current form, I think they might feel AC Milan are there for the taking. Although both sides got a decent result during the week in the UEFA Cup. It's Polish and Bulgarian opposition, respectively. Gronzaghi has gone to ground season with AC Milan and joins from Juventus during the summer. Well, he gets clattered around here pretty good, uh, coming right in on top of him. There's Marco Materazzi with the foul. Into new boy, former Perugia defender. Of course, there are those who will tell you that Pico Inzaghi is only too happy to take the fall. Yap Stam is in that corner. Forward by Serginho comes to Javier Zanetti. Gentilian 
international and captain of Inter is Kaka Kaladze. Watching this formation very carefully, it does appear to me that AC Milan are going with three at the back. Yeah, they've pushed Kaladze into midfield, uh, a role which he really enjoys, and they're just going with three. They've got Lorison in the back, in, in the middle, and they've got uh, Maldini on the outside of him. That's where they're going with Costa Corda. Sergio, that speculative ball. Straight down the throat of Francesco Toldo. He's seen five goals in his first six league matches for Inter this season. Sergio with the throw. Sergio, one of the real heroes for AC Milan in their 6 0 victory over Inter in the derby that took place back in May. Ventola. Costa putting in the challenge. Looking for Jorgatos, the Greek international. This is his second stint with Inter. Mohamed Kalon did well. Jorgatos, test there for Maldini. Sergio moving all the way back, almost to a left fullback position. Nothing comes of the attack. Most serious threat from Inter, and there is their bench. Yeah, they've got a few options there. Farina's certainly Simic, good player. Gresco, I mean, they're all players who can take their part in any game. Moreno certainly is a good goal scorer, and uh, I would say he might be the first one off the bench if they're not scoring. Sandro Costa Curta. To Rocky Jr. in the centre of the defence. Good tackle there by Jorgatos. Shevchenko for AC Milan. Questions asked of the Inter defence that time. And the free kick. Gattuso. Well, Gattuso is so tough, he gets involved here with Seda. Uh, I'm not sure that Seda ever fouled him. In fact, I thought maybe Gattuso pushed Seda out of the way. Seda was hanging on with a leg, hand on the leg there, but I don't see the foul. Gattuso did just enough to convince referee Pierluigi Colina. First dead ball examination of the match for Francesco Toldo. Shortage of options here for AC Milan. Sergio's there. Very Costa, of course. Shevchenko. Would you imagine this at a perfect angle for Sergio, wouldn't you? I'm not sure the wall is back. Mandatory 10 yards. 9.15 meters under the metric system. Be Shevchenko. That whistle just wide. All eyes were focused on Serginho, but instead Andrei Shevchenko stepped forward. Got it through the wall too because the wall broke down and he just misses this by about six inches. This is a real little long board job, never rises up on the grass, and he just missed that post. Very proud record, Shevchenko and Serie A. 53 goals in 72 matches, five goals in six games this season. Well, his partner in crime with uh, Dinamo Kiev would like to come to Milan, according to reports. Rebrov says he would love to join him. Oh! Oops, a daisy. Toldo was desperately close to handling that ball outside the box. Oh, I think he handled it outside of the box. I think his hand was outside of the box. His feet were inside of the box, but his hand was outside of the box. Rui Costa, midfield artist. 21 million pound signing from Fiorentina. That was a careless ball by Larison. And Callon fouled by Albertini. It was all down to shocking ball out of defence by Martin Larison. Albertini just sticks the boot out. I mean, he's very, very late. Let's see if we can catch Taldo. Where is he when he puts the ball? His hand's way outside of the line. His foot's way outside of the line. He's outside of the box. That was a terrible decision by Colina. Well, they clearly didn't have the right angle. We did have the correct angle, and he'd be the judge. Christian Abiati, 24-year-old goalkeeper for AC Milan. A scare for Hector Cooper's men. Six minutes on the clock. Inter nil, AC Milan nil. 
Carbon has recovered from that knock that he picked up following the Albertini challenge. And it appeals for handball against Seedorf. Comes to Maldini. Costa Curta, Marino Gattuso. One time star with Rangers in Scotland. They trapped Serginho. Takes on Zanetti. It's very much Serginho's game. To drill it in low and hard. When he gets to the byline, he can be a real menace. Well, how often have we seen a Brazilian up against an Argentine? At that time, it was exactly what happened. And uh, Zanetti can't afford to give him so much room because if he does, and speaking about Argentines, there's another one down. Vivas is down. But Zanetti can't afford to give Serginho the opportunity to knock the ball across. He, he, he has to close him down quicker. The spray is applied to Nelson Vivas, Argentinian international, signed on a free transfer from Arsenal during the summer. It's his very first experience of the Milan derby. Well, he's certainly been around a lot of clubs, hasn't he? With Arsenal twice, he was with Celta. And uh, you just wonder about a player, why does he move around so often? Deafening noise being generated by this crowd in excess of 80,000 this Sunday night as Vivas hobbles off the pitch. Serginho with the throw, into temporarily down to 10 men. Maldini. There's Albertini. Players know each other so well, of course. Faithful servants. Rui Costa, position just behind the two strikers. Albertini. Rui Costa, the bit of space. Actually, the shot coming in from Calanze in the end. While Rui Costa's running around, he's doing a lot of pulling defenders with him, and it allowed Calanze to get wide open. Calanze doesn't get much on it when he hits it but he was wide open Kakaladze the Georgian international former Dynamo Kiev player goes Larison Yorgatos not in possession by Gattuso well, Gattuso is one of those players he may not be the most brilliant in the world but he's just such a nuisance. I mean, he's always put his foot in, doing a little bit of pushing here. Nelson Vivas, as you saw there, back in the match. After receiving a bit of treatment, Sadov. Taken away by Larison, just possessing Nikola Ventola. This is the new look striking partnership, a youthful one for Inter. Canon and Ventola in the absence of Vieri and Ronaldo. Well, we got a shot of Ronaldo earlier sitting in the stand. I'm much sure that the Inter would love to have him on the field. And you just wonder the way things have gone. Is there a way back at all for Ronaldo? Everything comes back, there seems to be another injury. Mm, that was sloppy initially by Serginho as Callum. Slide again. Wins the throw. Not only one point out of six for... Milan and AC in the last two games. I think Fatih Terem could start finding himself under a bit of pressure here if they don't get a result tonight. And Zaki did well. It's a purposeful play. Aurui Costa. Not to pick out Andrei Shevchenko. Yeah, he had him in a spot where he could pick him out very easily. So ten minutes on the clock in the Milan derby. Inter nil. AC Milan nil. Gatos returned home after his initial spell at the San Siro went back to play for Olympiacos supposedly because he was homesick do so tussling with your Gatos timely tackle from Marco Materazzi well, this is kind of the role that Jorgatis likes to play, Derek. Pushed into the left side of midfield so as he can push forward. Seidorf. Come on. 
Larson ushering it back to Abiati. Messi Milan finishing a disappointing sixth in Serie A last season. And to make it to the quarterfinals of the Champions League to boot. Position goes against Nelson Rivas. Well, things are just not going Vivas' way out there. I'm Seven and Zaghi doing quite a bit of tussling, and uh, Vivas uh, gets called for I don't know what because Inzaghi simply fell. Costa Curta. Age of 35. Costa Curta first really made his name in Argentina with Lanús, working wonders on a limited budget. Went to Mallorca, Valencia. And now, here with Inter, with Costa right positioning by Francesco Toldo was actually on the books of AC Milan back in the 89-90 season but never played a single game for the club yeah, you just wonder about uh, how those decisions are made you look at Milan over the years it seems like they've made a, a number of mistakes like that Gulli Argentinian and it wasn't a bad ball for Colón Nicola Bentola has netted the opening goal It was simple, really, but what happened to the AC Milan defence? I'm sure Fanti Tarim would like to come up with an answer to that question. You're going to see Gurley coming forward. This is something he did so well when he was at AC Milan and helped him to a Scudetto. And uh, this ball is played over everybody, and it's just good determination here. Serginho doesn't get back, and the keeper, well, what happened to him? He fell. He fell going backwards into the back of the net. Only for that, it never would have been scored, but he fell. Inter 1, AC Milan nil as Inter try to erase the memories of the 6-0 drubbing suffered in the last derby match in May. And certainly it was a very well-crafted move. Gouli was behind it. Carlon took up an excellent position. Develop such a fine understanding, Callon and Ventola. To pay dividends this season for Inter. Well, it certainly did that, and that was good determination just to get onto the ball. Serginho. Comes to Di Biagio. The second crack of the whip for Serginho. Hesitation that time by Toldo. Matarazzi do the honours just in front of him. And Seydorf. And in on Kaka Kaladze. Serginho with the AC Milan free kick. They find themselves chasing the game now here at the San Siro. No problems that time for Odanetti who got caught. And to be Rui Costa it's sliding in here, yes, on Zanetti. Well, you're going to see, was there anybody offside here? There's questions about Kelan and. Uh... I'm not sure that he was offside, but he was very, very close. He does well here when the ball comes inside. Abiati has to take the blame on this goal. Watch him go back, and he just slips down. If he is standing in uh, upright position, he should have been able to get to that ball, but he fell down. Not sure why. He just he was trying to go back and couldn't regain his balance. So a quarter of an hour gone. It's Inter 1, AC Milan nil. Gattuso for AC Milan. Gatto snuffing out the danger and then crudely taken out by Gattuso. And escapes with a mere warning from Pierluigi Colina, but he should have got a card. Forget about the warnings. I mean, he just walks in and he kicks uh, Giorgiatis. Forget about Give him a card. Giorgiatis. 
Calon. And Seydorf. And Sabianti, I think, without any shadow of a doubt, at fault going back to that goal. He's lost his balance at a vital time. Vivas. Asking a lot of Seydorf to get there. Jorginho with the AC Milan throw. Trail 1-0. Into unbeaten in Serie A. They win this match. They'll move back into top spot ahead of Kievo. And there's 1-0 earlier over Parma as Inzaghi goes down. Ivan Cordoba is the culprit. Well, Cordova is one very tough character. He, he's never going to let you away with anything. And certainly when you come up against somebody like Inzaghi, you know exactly what's going to happen. He's going to clip him every chance he gets. Galante. And beside Albertini, the two workhorses there, just taking the pressure off Rui Costa. Allowing him to play in a more floating role. Scully. This is Albertini. Inzaghi said up. No change out of the inter defence. He was playing alone for that time. Ahead of Paolo Maldini. His 18th season with AC Milan. Condoba going to work. Guli. Jorgatos. Costa Curta intervenes. Monte Tarim, 28 year old manager of AC Milan. This was with Fiorentina last season. Uh, uh, that with Galatasaray and, of course, former coach of the Turkish national team. Larison just getting knocked down here. Ventola coming over over him. Larison's one of those strange situations. Parma went out and spent $11 million to buy him. And then they loaned him out to AC Milan. They, could, they couldn't pay the wage bill, so AC Milan are the beneficiaries of a big signing by Parma. Gattuso for AC Milan. Shevchenko moves out to the wing, as he tends to do from time to time. And Rui Costa. Very resilient into Milan's side. We've seen that time and again in the early part of the season. And Zanetti. So comfortable on the ball. Vivas. Seydorf. And again, as Serginho dropping back. I've been asking him to do that more and more. Tackle by Callon. And it's an inter ball. Well, you see the two players go for it here together, and that shouldn't be an inter ball. That should be an AC Milan ball. Di Biagio, first to the ball that time. Can he release Callon? He has plenty of pace. And Callon goes to ground. It's a corner, and I wonder if Pierluigi Colina was tempted to caution Callon for the dive. Well, I think he got hit. I mean, uh, it's a case of Larison coming in underneath him, and he hits him. I mean, he goes down. A very optimistic shout there, wasn't it? Well, I mean, he was. I don't think he was even looking for a penalty kick. I think he was just looking for the ball. Watching our coverage of the Milan derby here on ESPN, coming to you from the San Siro in Milan. Tommy Smith joining me, Derek Ray for commentary, and Nicola Ventola was the man who gave Inter the lead in the 13th minute. Ventola's third league goal of the season. Sedov's corner. Second bite at the cherry for Clarence Seedorf. That should be another corner kick, I fancy. Yes. Delivery again by Seedorf. There's a man down. I think that's Matarazzi.
So Holt is called to the play. So that seems going to be all right. Well, there's a lot of hitting out there, as you would expect in one of these derbies. I mean, that, that's part and parcel of what makes these derbies something special. Fatih Tareem searching for answers here. 1 0 to Hector Cooper's men. And Gatos having to cover a lot of ground. I just wonder, Tommy, if you think your Gatos is better suited to playing left back with four at the back or as a wing back, and we saw him more as a wing back in the past. Yeah, well, I think he loves to come forward. He, he, he does a good enough job at the back, but he needs a little bit of cover back there. I, I would rather see him on the on the wing. Albertini looking for Inzaghi. There is your Gantos tidying up. Doesn't have quite as much scope to go forward with the system. 4-4-2 favoured by Hector Cooper. Lawerson. Leaving it for Demetrio Albertini. That wasn't what the doctor ordered. Seedorf. Ventola was reaching for it. Going to Atalanta last season, Nicola Ventola scored 10 goals in 28 matches. He's never really lived up to what, when they went out and bought uh, Ventola and Pirlo together, they spent a lot of money for the two of them, and uh, he never really lived up to that. Shevchenko had made the run, trying to get in on the end of that one. To a flying start, Shevchenko five goals in the league this season. And 24 in the last campaign and 24 the season before that. It's consistency for you. Sadov losing out. Support there from Vivas for Inter. And Di Biagio. The man we were talking about earlier, Jorgatos. Ventola flinging himself at the ball. Well, he does have a lovely delivery when he comes forward, and uh, that was a tantalizing ball into the box. Ventola gets in behind Larson, and actually, Larson had no interest in playing the ball. And uh, Ventola just knocks the ball in the opposite direction. I should say that AC Milan have hit a bit of a sticky patch in the league, losing 3 1 away to Perugia a couple of games ago then in the last match 1-1 against Venezia and Zaki continued his run that time but I have to say at this stage I mean AC Milan are given as good as they're taking here they're a goal down but if Kalina had called the situation I mean Taldo wouldn't be in there anymore and AC Milan would have a man advantage because Kalina definitely missed Taldo stepping out over the line with his with his foot and with his hand it's an uncharacteristic error in judgment by Toldo. Dr. Cooper was saying at the press conference yesterday he didn't want to talk about revenge. Getting the run back after the 6 0 thrashing, of course, before his time. Harrison taking the fall then. I'm sure a lot of lads down in the Marconi club and down on there would love to see a bit of revenge. That's Galante. Well, that's a free kick. Vivas is also guilty of... I, I think that the day is going to his head a little bit here and uh, he's been guilty of uh, a number of fouls here. Hard-working player, Kaka Kaladze, but like Serginho, he's been hearing it from the crowd in recent matches. He's the most popular player on the squad. Now then, Rui Costa. The AC Milan free kick. Back to Gattuso. And Shevchenko moving all the way out to the right to collect the ball. From behind, Albertini has gone down. Well, you see the tackle coming in from the back, and uh, Kalina's going to have to step in here and, and, and take matters into his hands very shortly because the players are certainly taking it into their hands at the moment. Bit 
ambitious to try a direct shot at goal. It's a chip from Albertini. 19 minutes left in the first half. Inter 1, AC Milan 0. Still battling away. Rui Costa from a very narrow angle. Corner kick it is. Well, you've got to ask some questions there. Rui Costa took the ball away and they should never have gotten the second opportunity at the ball. Watch the way he takes it away here. He just slips inside, and uh, he's cutting through. They're much too late closing him down. Beavis let him go through, and Georgiatis has to come all the way over from his left-hand side. Serginho with the corner. Toldo, a fist to it. Seydorf completes the clearance for Inter. Only as far as Costa Curta. Albertini now. Sweeps it in, Shevchenko couldn't quite get there. Ivan Cordoba was the covering defender. To go skimming off his head again, Kaladze inside the penalty area. Cordoba did get the final touch. Kaladze's proven to be quite a threat here, coming deep. Uh, it's a role that we haven't seen him do a lot of, generally used as a defender, but today they've cut him loose and let him come forward. Serginho. Call that one away, disappointing delivery. In the form of Sao Paulo man. AC Milan need a win to draw level on points with Inter in second place. The clearance wasn't terribly clever from Gulli. Jorgatos. was showing for the ball. Here's Di Biagio. Seidorf. Now the captain, Javier Zanetti. Gatos. Trying to keep it low, looking for Ventola. Gatos drawn out of position. There is cover behind him. Inzaghi. Dodgy decision there by Pipo and Zaghi. Comes to Mohamed Kalon, one from Sierra Leone. Still only 22. Seems to have been around forever. Gouli for Inter. On the ground. That could have taken a nasty little ricochet. Could easily have bamboozled Christian Abiati. Well, he hit it well, and it, it just keeps nubbing inside, and Calon is inside just waiting and hoping that Abiati is going to spill it. It was a difficult ball for Abiati, but he kept his body behind it and covered it up very well, giving Calon absolutely no chance. It's a bit like that, a boxing match, this involving two very able heavyweights. Difficult to say who's ahead on points. We'll tell you who's ahead on goal scored at Inter, but... Not much between the two sides here. Nothing, just a kick of the ball between them or a mistake by a keeper. Just a reminder, we'll have live Champions League action for you during the week. Manchester United versus Olympiacos. That'll be on Wednesday. And United are desperate to bounce back from that bitter disappointment of losing 3-2 at home to Deportivo. We'll hear Tommy's dulcet tones on Wednesday alongside Mike Hill. The action from Old Trafford. Mr. Ferguson. Oh, he'd be still trying to convince the world of Manchester United are playing well at the back. Well, Inter are playing well at the back. We have Enjoy seen for Inzaghi. Yeah, we've seen nothing of Inzaghi here, Derek. We've seen very little of uh, Rui Costa, and uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of Shevchenko. So without those three getting into the fray. AC Milan are not going to do much. I mean, if you're depending on Kaladze to come forward and score the goals for you, I think it's a mighty toughy ask, tough ask. Vigorius Jorgatos. His 35th appearance in Serie A as Ventola tumbles to the ground over on the far side. A yellow card, I think, for Martin Larison for his part in this. Well, you can see Larison coming in. He has the boot very high. He's very late. And uh, he catches Ventola. Ventola, the ball was already gone. Uh, he, he can't have too many complaints about that.
So now some name in the book of referee Pierluigi Colina. Jorgatos stands over the free kick for Inter. Malone and Ventola making late runs. And Serginio was back there. It's a bit negligent. Seydorf. It wasn't a bad ball by Nelson Vivas. And Shevchenko. To keep it in. Colina gives the free kick against Albertini. Well, Cologne is standing his ground and uh, Maldini just basically runs over him. It's Maldini it was, you're right. Albertini right beside him. Okay, taken by Sedorf. Now, Gorgatos. Slipped by Vigorio Gorgatos. He just lost its way in the last five minutes or so. Yeah, it, 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 it's turned out to be a very dour event I mean they're just hitting one another out there given no space and uh, it's not a good day for good football at the moment but there's a long time left yes, a lot can happen a lot has happened already goal scored by Nicola Ventola in the 13th minute for Inter they lead by one goal to nil Jorgatos Gulli to work up a full head of steam and with the shots on for Gulli Similar to the attempt we saw from the big Argentinian five or six minutes ago. Well, the shot was on for him, but he never really connected with it. Albertini. Deciding to have a pop himself. And the decision goes against Pipo Inzaghi. Well, and Zaghi, just a little bit of a dunty, put the elbow up into the back, and uh, there's Gouli's shot. There was a little bit of the sting taken out of it, but that boot coming in, Nabiati, lucky to be able to collar that one, that it didn't take off on him. Inter's biggest derby win. Came all the way back in January of 1920 when they won by seven goals to three. I rather think this match will be more scoring than that one. And all is said and done. It's shaping up though, anyway, right? Yeah, the attack continues. Gulli, Jorgatos. We have a player down. It's back now. Deep cross from Jorgatos. Well, the play of putting uh, Zanetti over to cover Serginho has worked out very well. He has given him nothing. Shevchenko. Given to it by Zanetti. It's a forceful run from Javier Zanetti. And that's a corner. Larson has got a boot to it. But Zanetti meant business. Yeah, he's a good, powerful runner driving through from midfield. Larison got the touch on it. Corner kick of the match for Inter. Ten minutes to go in the first half in the Milan derby. Comes again to Jorgatos. Now Katusa. Not a man to be messed with. His third season with AC Milan. Still only 23. Gatos with the throw. Vivas. Here is Cantuso. Clear it away decisively, only as far as Sedorf. Gatos. Besides lacking the cutting edge in the final third just at the minute. Kaladze. And that's a very clever ball indeed, Inzaghi. Oh, not the shots. 
Plenty of conviction, plenty of power, but straight at the goalkeeper, Francesco Toldo. Yeah, Inzaghi shot from a little bit too far out, and uh, he could hear the footsteps. That was the reason why he shot so quickly. But it was a very clever ball by Caladze. Albertini now for AC Milan. Let's see if they can take strength from that one. Swept away by Marco Materazzi. Look at the Enzaghi here. He's just outside of the box. The ball takes a wicked bit of a bounce to him. He's starting to feel the pressure coming from behind. That's why he shot. And do so now. That won't help Frate Terim's cause. Received the dreaded second vote of confidence recently from Adriano Galliani, the vice president of AC Milan. Silvio Berlusconi's representative on earth. You know what those uh, vote of confidences mean? The end is nigh. Yeah, start preparing your resume. What if he comes back and he gets a win here today? It'll stave it off for a while, anyhow. Opportunity again for Zanetti. Taking Kaladze with him, Seedorf. And there's your Gatos. Gulli playing against so many of his old teammates here, including Gattuso. It's great work by Gulli, got it back from your Gatos. Pano. The final ball needed to be better than that from Gulli. They had AC Milan in all sorts of trouble at the back. And the offside flag is up. Well, I think it was a case with Gulli, Derek. He couldn't make up his mind when he wanted to, when he wanted to pass the ball. He was still looking for the support. Look at he's looking, looking, and then when he gets it back again, look at this. He looks up, looks up. Should I hit it now? Should I hit it now? And uh, he just almost lost the ball himself. And then Gattuso just takes it away rather easily in the middle. Certainly had plenty of time inside the box, did Gulli. Actually, it was Kaladze who made that clearance, but Gulli had, I think he had too much time. He had very little pressure. And you're going to see, I mean, this was easy to call. Sarginho for AC Milan. One goal in arrears. Shevchenko. Gatos who got it away. Ventola. Quick move again. Callon and Ventola wants the ball played in his direction. And he feels he should have done better. But there's evidence again. This dynamic partnership at work. Ventola and Callon. It worked out very well, except for the fact that Costa Corta got a good angle on, on Ventola. And Abiati had an even better angle. Now Shevchenko. He has a decent angle. That was a handball. Yeah, Luigi Colina was in the right place to make the decision that time. And decided if there was contact with the hand, it was accidental. Into one, AC Milan nil. Zanetti. The option provided by Callon. Sergio on Zanetti. It's a throw. Well, he won the ball. He went through Zanetti, getting some of his own back here, but... Uh, Nice little flick here from Calon. There's the tackle by Serginho coming through. I'm not sure. I, I thought maybe he got maybe he got uh, he Zanetti before he got the ball. The initial signal was throw in, but free kick has been awarded. Yeah, and rightly so because he did catch him. Well, coming up at half time, we'll take a look ahead to the Real Madrid AS Roma Champions League match to be played on Wednesday. You'll be able to see it here on ESPN. Plus all the first half highlights from this Milan derby. Pulsating stuff. Inter 1, AC Milan 0. Sedor for the free kick for Inter. Zanetti. And Sedor and Zanetti coming to his right. Oh, Bowser has judged that ball completely. And again, Ventola was waiting to pounce. I think Maldini was the man who threw Larison off. Larison may have gotten the blame for it, but if you watch Maldini out in front of it, he mistakes it first. Look at that. And that threw Larison off, and certainly Ventola never expected it to get through to uh, AC Milan defenders. Zaghi. He's getting 
tangled up there with Jorgatos. Scully takes it away. So confident going forward. Relishing the chance here to play against his old club. Costa has flashed in and out of this first half. Costa Curta. Comes to Kaladze. Albertini. And all the bodies behind the ball for Inter. Costa Curta. This is better, headed away by Marco Materazzi. Serginho. Oh, that cross was frustrating, but the header from Inzaghi again straight at Toldo. That's been the story of Inzaghi's first half. Yeah, and Inzaghi was, uh, he could feel there was a bit of pressure there. He wasn't going to get the open header, and uh, he got nothing on it. Oh, Kaladze got done. See him pulling up there. The back. So went in for the ball, yes, the lower back area. Very good view of that. See him. Just the way he turned around and the way Bentelak came down on top of his shoulder. You know, sometimes you can't explain how an, ex how an injury occurs, but you certainly couldn't explain that. Two minutes to go in the first half at the San Siro. Inter 1, AC Milan 0. Inter need a victory to move back ahead of Chievo, the top of the Serie A table. Maldini. No pressure here from Bentala and Calon, just happy to drop off. Zaghi, the book was high from Ivan Cordoba. The defender in his third season with Inter. Well, you knew that he was going to knock lumps out of Inzaghi coming in today. I mean, every chance he gets, he's really piling it on him. And Inzaghi has knew it is good well coming in. Look at that elbow crashing into the side of his ear. Give him a warm look there. Seidorf and Zanetti joined here by Ventola. Inside the final minute of this first half, stoppage time still to come. Be Shevchenko gets ready with this long run up. Yes, it will be Andrei Shevchenko. Corner kick. Well, Shevchenko takes a very long run up to it. Everybody in the stadium. Everybody on the field knew who was going to hit it, and D.B. Agier just turned his back to it, which is dangerous. I mean, you can deflect the ball into the net very easily that way. Roy Costa flights it in. Shevchenko went up for the ball. Maldini. Serginho. That was a good quality cross again for Shevchenko, but he was fouling. Well, it's one of the few times we've seen Maldini come forward into an attacking position. Shevchenko doing a bit of pushing on Di has done a great job in there, just closing down that middle today. So one minute of time to be added on at the end of this first half. I just wonder, Tommy, if AC Milan might consider that as a potentially productive option, the chance to get Serginho free on the left and supply those quality balls. Well, I think the fact that Zanetti is out there taking him out of it, 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 it's a question of being able to work it out, but I think we'll see a change up front for AC Milan very early in the second half. Here is Serginho, winding a couple of challenges with ease. Whoa. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What was that? As we said, he's come in for a bit of stick on the AC Milan punters in recent weeks, and that won't help his personal cause. Under one minute of time added on. The end of this first half, so far so good for Hector Cooper's men. Disappointment for Fatih Tarim and company. Half-time in the Milan derby. And Inter lead by one goal to nil. 
Nicola Ventola supplying the goal in the 13th minute after good work by Gouli, former AC Milan player, and Mohamed Kallon. Well, you know, to be honest about it, I don't think Inter Milan deserve a 1-0 lead, but to have the 1-0 lead, and that's all that counts, AC Milan have never really got themselves going. This was the goal again, scored by Nicola Ventola, his third league strike of the season. Hector Cooper and Inter, 1-0 in front of AC Milan in the derby. Stevie Ray, you didn't know? Brother, don't you know? Suckers got to know. Oh! Know that what, Stevie Ray? That main event is premiering the new wave in wrestling. Oh! WWA, the Inception. Oh! You're doing it live at the Sydney Superdome, sucker. You better call somebody, and I mean now. The Inception, live main event this Friday, 7.30 p.m. Call 1-300-300-666 and book now. Alpha. Greek Australian television brings you current affairs with discussions on local and world events. Alpha brings you shows where real life unfolds before your eyes. There's the very best in Greek drama series. Alpha takes you to the movies. Take it in with. Enjoy your favorite stars. There's extensive news coverage bringing you the news just as it happens. Connect now to Alpha. It's the world you want to see. Who do you think is the best club on the planet? Is it Real Madrid? Or Manchester United? How about Boca Juniors? Or Juventus? Want to find out? Log on to ESPN.com every weekend for ESPN's World Club Top 25 Ranking. Vital match on this Sunday night. It doesn't get much bigger than the Milan derby. Inter lead AC Milan by one goal to nil. But of course, come Tuesday and Wednesday here in Italy, we'll be focusing on the UEFA Champions League. A true battle of heavyweights is expected on Wednesday as Real Madrid take on Roma. Madrid won the first meeting by two goals to one at the Olympic Stadium back on match day one. The Spanish champion's victory was well merited, but the match was played under difficult circumstances, going ahead on the 11th of September, just hours after the terrorist attacks on the United States. I don't know if it was difficult or not. When you enter to play, you tend to forget about everything. Before the game, I am sure that we were all thinking about everything. We weren't thinking about the game. We were thinking about the problem in the United States. This does not serve as an excuse to us. We played badly because we just played badly. Perhaps it would have been best not to play in respect with all those people involved in this tragedy. The people who were in the towers. This is just my opinion. After the game, it was as it is. Considering the circumstances, it was an entertaining affair with both teams opting for attacking football. The return match might not be as wide open. I don't think it was the best game that we had with our team against uh, Rome. In Italy, teams, when they play away from home, don't uh, attack as much. They are known more for their counter-attack. And Madrid, they like to keep possession. But in Rome, they were attacking, but here they will definitely depend a lot, as they are doing now. It would be difficult, but it may be a very good game. Madrid have been the dominant force so far in Group C, winning all four of their matches in convincing fashion. Surprisingly for Roma, every game has been a struggle, but they have received a few lucky breaks and can qualify for the second group stage with a win at the Bernabeu. The Italian champions will have to be much more than lucky on Wednesday. They can't go banking on Madrid to do them any favours, even though they've already qualified for round two.
I think that they are also having a difficult moment. In the Champions League, they're in a great position. But in the Spanish Championship, they are not in a good position. They're going through difficult moments with the public. Therefore, they will try to win all their games that they will be playing. I think we can be confident about that. The match will also mark the return from suspension of World Player of the Year, Zinedine Zidane. This has all the makings of a Champions League cracker. I hope that it will be a beautiful game. We hope to win. I think for all the players here, it's a dream to play in the Bernabeu. Therefore, it is important to have a good result. I think that playing difficult games, we perform very well. So we will try to do that because against Real Madrid, it will be a very difficult game. Well, you'll see that Real Madrid Roma match live here on ESPN. Check your local listings for the exact times where you are. There's just an outside chance left for Anderlecht in that group to qualify. They'll have to beat Lokomotiv and then pray for a miracle on match day six when they travel to the Olympic Stadium in Rome. That's assuming that AS Roma don't defeat Real Madrid. As we said, you'll see Real Madrid versus Roma live on Thursday morning. Check your local listings for the exact times where you are. Have all the pubs will be up and about at that time of the morning. I should imagine they will be as usual. Tommy will be joined by Mike Hill for commentary. Inter lead AC Milan 1-0 in the derby. Tommy will return after the break with his analysis of the first half. Well, 1-0 used to be enough for Inter back in the good old days of the 60s. Good old days if you're an Inter fan. Perhaps not for the opposition. Inter 1, AC Milan 0 in this 250th Milan derby. Tommy, your reflections on the first half? Well, Shevchenko got an, uh, got an opportunity five minutes into the first half. He hits it well, he keeps it down low, but he misses by about four inches. I mean, Taldo would never have known what that ball was. And watch it zip by the post, zip by Taldo. He came down much too late. And then we had something to change the complete turn of the game. Watch T Taldo, does he go outside of the box? You bet he does. That hand is out, the foot is out, half the body is out, but there was no call on it. Kalina missed it. And then Maldini leaves Calan run through. Serginho comes back to take care of him. And when Abiati's backing into the goal, he falls down and Ventola comes through and he pushes the ball into the net. It was a long, hopeful ball in, but look at Abiati. He falls down. Uh, Maldini picks up Ventola like he should have. I mean, Maldini did the right thing, except that he wasn't able to keep him out of there. See, even Stephen, in terms of the facts and figures, four shots apiece, three quarters apiece, and ten fouls each. Yeah, it's been a very, very even game. And but for two goalkeeper errors, one goalkeeper error that wasn't punished, one goalkeeper error that was punished, and that's the difference in this game. It's the one booking for Martin Lawson of AC Milan. And so Inter desperate to protect their unbeaten record in Serie A. They're the only undefeated side in the league. One nil they lead. The second half is coming up on ESPN. Well, a very tense Sunday evening unfolding here in Italy. It's Inter 1, AC Milan 0 in the 250th Milan derby. Tommy Smith joining me, Derek Ray, for commentary here on ESPN. Inter taking the lead to that goal from Nicola Ventola in the 13th minute. A bad mistake by Christian Abiati. And as Tommy said, in many ways, a tale of two goalkeeper incidents in the first half. The Toldo incident clearly handled the ball outside the box, grabbed hold of it. Luigi Colina wave play on and then the mistake by Abiati shortly after that. Let's take you through the other scores in the Italian league this weekend. Juventus held to a 0-0 draw away there to Bologna. Chievo are the leaders. Corradi with the only goal in their victory over Parma. You see whopping triumphs by five goals to one for Udinese at Atalanta and for Roma at home to Lecce. A one down at the bottom really catches your attention. Lazio failed to score again and failed to come up with a victory. This is just a dismal season for Lazio and they're way down the table. I mean, they're way down there in about 10th or 11th spot. Yes, they're struggling. Uh, Lazio, there's no doubt about that. Just one victory to their name. There you see the top six. Now, Inter, if they hang on here, will jump clear of Chievo. But credit has to go to Chievo nonetheless for this astonishing start to the campaign. Bologna in third, a 0-0 draws, we said, between Bologna and Juventus. 
Roma have made up a bit of ground following their 5-1 victory over Lecce. Well, there is Cosmin Contra, the man who we thought would start this match. Romanian right back signed from Alaves during the summer. Watching Italian football on ESPN from the San Siro in Milan. Problems here for Fatih Tarim and his AC Milan side. And it's Contra for Albertini. Nice to have you with us, as always. This big Serie A fixture doesn't get much bigger. Derby della Madonina. Just trying to... Sorry, Tommy, Contra for Albertini. Just trying to figure out what they're going to do. Are they going to go to four at the back? Uh, with Contra over there as the right back, or will they try to push uh, Costa Curta maybe into midfield? I rather fancy it will be four at the back, don't you? Well, you'd imagine it would be. Not that they've any problems in that department. The problems they had was up front. Which mean Contra, an explosive, attack minded right full back. That's a, that's a helping hand to Ventola. Not in any position to accept it initially. There he is. Well, Gattuso was one of those players that always seems to get a piece of you, and uh, he will knock you around a bit. And that's what's happening out there now. He just got stuck in there very, very quickly. That was him and uh, Ventola. Ventola needs a little bit of attention here. Just a question of retying the bootlaces. Cordoba for Inter attacking the goal to our left in the second half it was all very tight very tense the first 45 minutes quality chances few and far between Maldini oh dear was good it comes to Shevchenko on the volley well, it's almost difficult to hit that dropping ball but we've come to expect better from Shevchenko in that position yeah, he was always uh, fighting this ball, and when he does spin around on it, he comes around a little bit too far on it. I thought he might have taken it down with the right and had to go, or taken it down with the left and had to go with the right when he took it down, but he decided to go with it in the volley. Looks like four at the back for AC Milan, as we suspected, Tommy. Yeah, they've put Contra in as the right back. That means that uh, Larison is going to be stay in the middle uh, alongside of uh, Costa Corta, and Maldini will stay on the left. Also with four at the back, it's been that way since the very start. That's Contra and Aviati. Just the one clean sheet this season in Serie A. Got a chance to add to that total in this game. We already conceded the goal scored by Ventola. Sarginho comes to Vivas and Di Biagio. His own quiet way did a very effective job. It's the midfield shield for Inter in the first half. Gatos and Contra has only been on the park for a couple of minutes. Receives the yellow card. Well, that's one of the problems you have taken on a sub in a derby like this. You sit on the bench and the blood is starting to go to your head for the first half because you see the way things are going and you come into the game and you make a silly mistake and that's exactly what that is. Contra had no chance of getting the ball and he just rips the leg out from underneath your jackets. I mean, that's just a foolish mistake. Not sure if the exaggerated roll by your Gatos was 100% necessary, mind you. Now let me kick you on the leg and see how much rule roll. This cramped commentary box, not very far. Now there's Contra. And a big boot from Martin Larison. All the way back to Cordoba. Mohamed Callon. And a part, of course, in the goal scored by Ventola. Well, they're still looking at that playing Rui Costa just behind the strikers, which means basically they only have the three in the midfield that's working hard. There's one of them. Serginho and a corner. Still feel he could be the AC Milan trump card. Well read by Cordoba. Somebody will need to be. They need to get something in the midfield. Serginho's cross. 
too obvious, too straight. Easy meets for Francesco Toldo. One of the most highly regarded managers on the world, Hector Cooper. It's been a success. Every job he's taken charge of. Maldini and Zaghi. So a bit of trouble with the pace of this game. Now Rui Costa. Goes for offside. It was Shevchenko who strayed into the illegal position. Well, you can see what uh, AC Milan are going to do now is they're going to push up the two defenders. They're going to push Maldini up. We only saw him come up once in the first half, very close to the end of it. But he is capable of coming up on the attack. And they're going to uh, push the, the man who they just took on as a sub contra up through midfield as well. That could leave a lot of opportunities here. Here is Callon. Opportunity for the man from Sierra Leone. Scored twice against Wisla Krakow of Poland on Thursday night in the UEFA Cup. I'd like to have this one back. He just leaned away from it, slapped it up over the top. But with only two basically at the back, Costa Kurt and Larison, it could be a good time now for Ventil and Callon. Is Calon, his international debut for Sierra Leone at the age of 15. Let's see Milan again trying to get players forward. This time it's Calanze struggling to keep his feet. Away comes Zanetti. Vivas. Well, Zanetti has certainly solved the problem of Serginho. And now he's also taken on anybody else who comes through. Inter, remember, without the suspended Stefan Dalmat after his red card last week, controversial one in Udine. Decisions of that match had the president of Inter, Massimo Moratti, raging. Furious with referee Alfredo Trentalange. Penalty award that appeared to be highly dubious. Secured the point for Udinese. Great Costa. Inzaghi again failed to get in on the end of it. It's not working out for Inzaghi in this match, Tommy. No, that time uh, he misjudged the ball. I thought he might have got a little bit uh, pulled back, but obviously he didn't do any whinging, so he probably wasn't sense at the moment that Inter are sitting in happy to soak up a limited amount of pressure hang on to their 1-0 advantage yeah which mightn't be uh, advisable in this situation Gulli Maldini's header most kindly for Gulli again After a couple of missteps uh, from Gattuso Colón has taken up position Costa Curta's header Rui Costa Elegant player. After the ball by Zanetti, and it's an inter free kick. It's to the chagrin of Rui Costa. Well, Zanetti's having a brilliant game out there for himself. And uh, he tries to get to the ball. Rui Costa. I'm not sure I see where Rui Costa fouled him. Look at the two of them going for the ball. He, you know, he attempted to kick him, but it was purely accidental. Range possibility here for Clarence Seedorf. It comes off Di Piaggio. And a corner kick has been awarded. I wonder if Maldini got the last touch. Yeah, it looks like he did. He just got in front of Di Biagio and lucky for AC Milan he did, or Di Biagio would have burst a hole in the back of the net, I imagine. Watch as this ball comes inside. Watch Maldini go for it. Watch the boot come up there. And yeah, he just slaps it away at the last moment. Just enough to put off Luigi Di Biagio. Here is Sadov, short corner. And prepare for another one. Costa Costa. No hurry. Alan Sadov, here's Carlon. He can do much better. The other end, Inzaghi. Uh, Vivas, Inzaghi barging away there at 
Vivas, and indications here that Inzaghi's head is dropping just a bit. Yeah, he's getting himself involved in the physical game, which is really not his game. But the thing about him is he can hang around like a lot of other good strikers for a long, long period of time, not do anything, and he beat you with the last kick of the ball. So I wouldn't rule him out just yet. Robbie Moreno and Massimo Donati are limbering up for AC Milan. Perhaps the changes on the offing. Your Gatos, it's good control. It's Gulli. And Gattuso, he won the ball cleanly. Costa initially just kicked it too far forward for his own good. Shevchenko. There's a play by Marco Materazzi, timed the tackle perfectly. Inter 1, AC Milan 0. Contra. There's nothing there for the Romanian international. Way by Gulli. Straight to Rui Costa. It's Talon. Costa Curta. Gatos. Pushed apparently by Contra. I don't think so. Maybe their feet clashed a little bit. Let's see what happens. Ah, he just nicked the feet together, yeah. He knocked the two feet together. Well, any sort of victory would go a long way from the Inter point of view towards... People forget about the 6-0 drubbing. My money's on a draw. Of the 1-1 variety? Or... Yeah. yeah. Long way still to go. Shevchenko. To pull it back. I don't think it's a good play by Inter Milan to dig themselves in so deep. They're absorbing a lot of pressure here. Shevchenko tried to turn on a sixpence. And Roy Costa. Plenty of force behind the shot. Just failed to keep it down. But it was promising from the AC Milan point of view. Rui Costa barrels onto it and he drives it up over the top. Nicely set up for him by uh, Shevchenko. And uh, Rui Costa could have done a lot better with that. You sense that the tide is just turning in AC Milan's favour a bit here. And you just feel that to have them pinned back there and... Uh, it may not all be by design. Some of it may be by design that Inter are staying back, but uh, a lot of it is happening because AC Milan have upped the tempo here a notch. Rui Costa's the key man, obviously. If he can get the ball and start pulling Inter defenders towards him, he will uh, spread that Inter defense around and leave room for Nzagi and for Shevchenko. Lattering challenge there by Sadov. Rui Costa. Here's Costa Curta. This is Larison, 24-year-old Danish defender. See up and under. I don't think Fatih Terim will be terribly happy with that. That's the view from on high. Coming to you from this magnificent San Siro Stadium, 250th Milan Derby, Derby della Madonnina. Derby of the Little Madonna. So Inter 1, AC Milan 0. Costa Curta across the defence to Maldini. Shevchenko. Mentola was the man crossing swords with Shevchenko there. Palazzi. Difficult ball to judge. Costa Curta. Kept a cool head. Now Larissa. Calon is everywhere. But he won't get away with that. And once more, he's been called forward here by Pierluigi Colina. And there will be a booking for Mohamed Calon. Well, you can see what he said. You just give it a pull. You just give him a pull here. Where, I don't know. Not much. Sergio, it's away by Cordoba, holding this inter defence together. Gattuso, Leon's 
says referee Kalina. And Shevchenko this time, 1-1. Andrei Shevchenko. His sixth goal of the season. And we've drawn accustomed to expect finishing like that from the man from the Ukraine. AC Milan are back in it. What a piece. A few minutes ago I said Rui Costa was the key, Derek, and Rui Costa is the man who feeds this ball in. No question of being offside. And if Shevchenko gets in behind Georgiatis and a powerful downward header puts the balls in the back of the Yale Onion bike. And if Shevchenko was the scorer. Brilliantly taken, brilliantly fed across to him. And the ploy by Inter Milan to defend so deep has certainly come back to haunt them. They've given up a goal here. They came out, you said it in the second half. You thought they were taking a lot of uh, pressure. Now they have to start all over again. Inter 1, AC Milan 1. See if AC Milan can take additional strength from that. Zanetti wins the ball. Now Seydorf. Piangio, the link man in midfield, your Gatos. This crossing hasn't really been up to par this evening. Not at all. There's the finish by Shevchenko. Great textbook stuff. Down and away from the keeper. Look, he didn't get a card for throwing his jersey away. 54th goal of his Serie A career. Six now for the season, just one point off the pace at the top of the scoring chart. Huge goal for AC Milan, it could turn out to be a huge goal for Kievo too. So it might be the goal that keeps Kievo on top of the lead. Gattuso and Shevchenko on the right. Free kick taken quickly. Taken free kick, bamboozled Inter. And Contra has his first league goal for AC Milan. Oh, what a shot it is. Look at all the room he had. Look at all the time he had. And look at the finish. Absolutely brilliant. A laser beam shot right up into the corner of the net. The free kick was taken very, very quickly. And Fatty Tarem is going absolutely crazy. Look at this. Look at all the room he had, Derek. Five, six defenders there, but none of them had any answer. And it was with his left foot as well. Well, two goals in two minutes, and the entire equation has changed here now. Well, they had a gun down there somewhere measuring that. 101 kilometers an hour he hit it at. Well, the other end, Antala and Callon trying to combine Abiates there. Well, Fatih Terem looks like an absolute genius now, bringing on Contra, and he gets that brilliant goal. Just a few minutes ago, Fatih Terem was wearing the countenance of a very worried man. Celebration after the Contra goal. Told you the story. Well, there is Adriano. 19-year-old Brazilian, signed from Flamengo during the summer. And he's about to come on for Hector Cooper's team. Larson. Shevchenko. Shevchenko it was who did the hard work, winning that free kick that set up the goal for Contra. With the Inter defenders completely out of position. Zanetti. Vivas. Comes to Yorgatos. That was a better cross, Aviati. Clear it away decisively. And Calante having trouble with that lower back, apparently. 
you just wonder how long more he will last. He's on the ball now. Watching the Milan derby here on ESPN. Tommy Smith joining me, Derek Ray, for commentary from the San Siro. It's now 2-1 to AC Milan. Shevchenko and Contra have a pair of astonishing strikes in the space of two minutes. Does he take out Pantola now to take on the striker, or does he go with three strikers and maybe take out a, a defender? Inzaghi has had a difficult time of it. We saw Massimo Donati warm up just seconds ago there for AC Milan. And there is a change in the offing, but we continue with the live action for the moment. Gato scrapes it away for Inter. to Kalanzi, just to get rid of the ball in the end. Jorgatos. This is Gattuso. To play his way out of trouble. Just watching Kalanzi out there, he's not moving very well, Derek. You just wonder if Donati will come in to replace him. Rui Costa, Tommy said, the architect of the Shevchenko goal. Here is Contra, and it's an excellent ball! And Inzaghi has scored! It's three goals in five minutes for AC Milan. Just as we were saying, Inzaghi was having a quiet match. He makes us eat our words. And this is incredible stuff we're seeing. Three-one to AC Milan. Once again, you have to give Ruby Costa a lot of credit. Contra is the man who plays the ball across, and like I said, and Zaggy can stand around for 80 or 85 minutes and still beat you. Ruby Costa wins the ball in midfield. Contra, who has proved to be a star coming on as a substitute, comes up and feeds the ball. Abby Abby has injured his hand. I'm not sure how he injured the hand because the ball wasn't near him, but he has definitely injured his hand. But what a beautiful ball from Contra. Well, with things slipping out of Inter's reach here, Adriano will replace Nicola Ventola. And that's the end, I think, for Inzaghi, just seconds after scoring the goal. Yes, Donati has come on. Massimo Donati. Former Atalanta player signed during the summer on a £5.5 million pound deal. Tommy Smith. I'm surprised at that. I'm really surprised that it, it looks like that was scheduled to happen even before Inzaghi scored the goal. I thought that Kaladze was the man who was going to go off because of the way he's struggling out there. You could tell Inzaghi was not at all happy. I mean, that's not a very good reward to get, is it? You stick the ball in the back of the net, you look around and see your number up to be taken on as a substitute. So it's Adriano for Ventola. Sergino's in the mood now for AC Milan. Crosses wayward. No contra. Donati supporting. He has replaced Inzaghi. 3 1 to AC Milan. Three goals in six minutes to be exact about it. So much for Inter getting their own back following the 6 0 thrashing they suffered in this same fixture back in May. Gulli. Now Gatos. Wasn't a very clever pass. Di Biagio sliding in, just locking the legs of Donati around his. Well, you're going to see Contra has played a very important part here. Look at this. And then Zaghi goes back across his body and knocks the ball down very very nicely takes his goal very well anything Tommy you can put your finger on trying to explain this collapse by Inter well I think it was one of the things was that they laid back and they allowed uh, AC Milan to get back into the game and then the fact that Contra came on he put on much more pressure Albertini didn't have a good game in midfield but coming up along the side it uh, allowed Rui Costa to go back out into midfield and Rui Costa got a lot more possession than he did in the first half so when you combine them all together and good crossing and they, they took care of those crosses when they came in 
Adriano the substitute to break the shackles of Paolo Maldini. Oh, what an easy proposition. Your Gatos. And fires it in. And to need a goal and quickly. And to stem the tide. Adriano. Only through there against Martin Lawson. Tries to G up his teammates, Adriano. I'm not sure if they expected so much out of Contra from the bottom from Alaves last year. The bought Contra for 8.5 million and the bought uh, Moreno for 7.5 million dollars. And they've really gotten the money's worth from Contra. Moreno hasn't come good yet, but sometimes it takes the strikers a little bit longer. Gulli. Putting out Fox, AC Milan defence. 3-1 now to AC Milan in the derby. Just a reminder, we'll have coverage of the NBA's opening night from the United States for you on the 31st of October. Washington Wizards against the New York Knicks, and I believe Washington have a new player, do they? Yeah, Mr. Jordan will make his debut back into the NBA. Going to visit New York at the big yard down on 34th Street, Madison Square Garden. That should be quite a night. I thought you were referring to your garden for a second then. No, I don't think they'll play in my garden. It's big enough for a game, all right, but I don't think they're going to play in it. There's no coverage. This is Vivas. Astonishing turnaround here at the San Siro. Messi Milan not content with a 3-1 advantage. Going for number four, Shevchenko. Times have we seen Shevchenko single handedly rip apart the opposition defense? It's a corner kick. This time he does go out on the left hand side, Derek. Most of the time you see Shevchenko come out deep, he goes out onto the right hand side. But with the Contra coming up, there's no room out there. It's Cristiano Zanetti, 24 year old former Roma player, about to enter the fray by the look of things. First, we have the corner kick. Sergio's over there. Rui Costa supporting. Back it comes. Gattuso oh. with the drive. Unable to keep it down. And it will be Cristiano Zanetti for Luigi Di Biagio. Of course, you know what they have in common. Both former Roma players. They'd love to be Roma players last year. I mean, what they don't have in common is one of them is a much more defensive-minded player than the other. Di Biagio is a much more defensive-minded player. The man coming in is going to go up the field every chance he gets. 18 minutes to go. And Milan really turning on the style now. Donati. Locked up there by Cristiano Donati. Two Donatis. On the park now for Inter. Javier, the captain, the man from Argentina, Cristiano, the former Roma player. And no joy for Adriano. Cordoba. Materazzi, son of highly respected coach Giuseppe Materazzi. Former Sporting Lisbon and Venezia manager. Cristiano Zanetti. Cristiano trying to hold it up. AC Milan really have dictated the terms in the second half. Inter have been made to pay for perhaps sitting in a bit too deep right at the start of the second half. Gattuso, free kick. Howling Adriano. Well, Adriano came through that Flamengo system in Brazil. He's big, he's strong, and he is very, very quick moves. He's just had one goal for them this year. But you've got to figure that there's quite a few goals in his career if he gets an opportunity. And it comes quickly, and oh, Adriano. Throwing himself at the ball. What happened at the back there if the AC Milan defenders fell asleep, but it was taken desperately quickly. So, corner now to Inter. 
Seen off. This very wayward delivery by Clarence Seedorf. Head off from Cordoba, straight through to Abiati, who seems to have recovered from that finger injury that was bothering him earlier. Yeah, and uh, Seedorf is one player who really hasn't stepped up here today for Inter. I know he always works hard. Shevchenko, it's an excellent ball. Shevchenko's gone down. To release Rui Costa. Shevchenko limps back up onto his feet. Now Shevchenko really is playing on his own. He has Rui Costa sort of floating behind him in the hole there. Rui Costa should have walked in with that ball. I mean, that ball was played perfectly to him. And Vivas cautioned just seconds ago for that foul on Shevchenko. Well, the referee played good advantage, and I thought that Rui Costa should have taken better advantage of it. He didn't take off with the ball for some reason. Cooper chanting there with Okan. One million pound summer signing from Galatasaray, 28-year-old midfielder. I'm sure he was at dinner with Fatih Taram during the week. Yes, he was. This was Emery. Well, this has been a remarkable second half. Well, you see Shevchenko gets nailed here. I'm not sure that Beavis even knew that he was kicking Shevchenko, but he put his hands up into his face. Okan Buruk, to give him his full name, or replace Gregorios Yorgatos. I think Beavis for a moment thought he was on his way out. It's Okan's third appearance in Serie A has yet to open his account. really has made a positive difference for AC Milan in the second half. Made a very dodgy start with that booking in the 47th minute. Yeah, you could kind of tell he, he, he came in with a little bit too much passion and a little bit too much emotion. That's stayed off. Hit the pass intended for Adriano. Adriano has proved to be a handful in there. He's caused a few problems. Tell you that Christian Brocchi is preparing to come on for AC Milan. It will be their third and final substitution. Inter have already made three. Costa, and this is a delightful move. Serginho Zinchenko! Second goal for Shevchenko, and the issue must surely be beyond all doubt now. An amazing clap by Hector Cooper's men, and AC Milan have scored four goals in 17 minutes. Well, this is a case of Serginho doing what he's supposed to do whip the ball across. Perfect ball whipped in. Look at beautiful move here. There's the last line, Shevchenko races through, and what a beautiful golden touch by the man from the Ukraine. Great, great ball, fed through, Shevchenko runs onto it, and he smacks it up into the roof of the net. This is what he's supposed to do, this is how they worked it out. We saw this in that 6 nothing victory, Shevchenko and Serginho combining like that, and that was just perfect, perfect. Inter 1, Milan 4, and no one in his wildest dreams, not even the most fervent AC Milan supporter, would have predicted this at half-time, Tommy. No question uh, about that. I mean, uh, AC Milan were really struggling. Morrison with a header. Back to his goalkeeper, Abiati. Uh, watch the nice move by Shevchenko, but watch what the ball is played by Serginho. Look at that. And the, the defenders, uh, you have to say that they stopped a little. I mean, Viva stopped. And about ushers it back. Viva has been a kind of pushed into a central defensive role with Zanetti going out wide on the right where he was. And it's Brocky. Here's that Rui Costa as the player they are about to withdraw. Costa Curta. 
Kalanze is there. I'm not surprised that Kalanze has lasted as long as this. They're there for the duration now. Rui Costa. And he got caught late again. Matarazzi with the challenge. And that's a yellow card for Matarazzi. It really is falling apart here for Inter. And Rui Costa has caused most of the damage for them. Plus the fact that Shevchenko has gone out wide on that left-hand side. And uh, Rui Costa getting a lot of uh, possession. Well, here is the substitution now. That's it for Rui Costa. And on comes Christian Brocchi. Former Inter player, of course. Across the city divide during the summer. A deal worth £5 million. Pounds. I think this game has gone out of reach of Inter at this stage anyhow. It doesn't matter who AC Milan take on, they're just giving them a win bonus. Serginho with a free kick. Oh, wasn't far away. And he's clearly enjoying himself. And why not? A man really handing it to the city rivals here. Are destined for their first league defeat of the season. Adriano. Mr. Seedorf. Adriano was reaching for the ball. It's good play by Donati. And they're trying to do everything at pace now, but it's asking an awful lot of them. So to have everything in control. One nil as we move towards the hour mark, but then the collapse. And a dramatic one at that. Vivas shifted over to this left hand side. Matarazzi. Wasn't the best ball we've ever seen off the boot of Maserazzi. Trying to whip it in away by Larison. Gattuso. Lucan Buruk. To latch onto the ball. Serginho now oozing confidence. It's a back from Donati. Tarim. He knows where his bread is buttered. Rui Costa was the man who turned this thing around for him by bringing him out into midfield. As Fati Tarim knew all about the genius of Rui Costa from his days with Fiorentina. Well, it's a very hard story to tell the tale of this match. As things were going so well for Inter in the first half. It was a tight first 45 minutes, we should say, but very much Inter's type of game. And admittedly, they did sit back a bit at the start of the second half, but there was no indication that AC Milan were going to score four goals in 17 minutes. Okan for Inter, and Calon is offside. I think you've got to give Fatih Taremba a lot of credit. He realised that Rui Costa playing in the hole behind Shevchenko and Inzaghi wasn't working out properly as we're going to see Kalan in the offside position clearly he's offside but what he did was he took Albertini out of midfield he put Rui Costa into midfield and he took Shevchenko out on to the wing which left Inzaghi inside he left room for Rui Costa to become creative and he left room for Contra to come up on the outside and they just turned it around the more possession Rui Costa got the easier it became for AC Milan. But the key thing, of course, Derek, was that they got their chances and they took them. I mean, how many balls did Serginho provide today? Very few. But the one that he did get in there, Shevchenko stuck it in the back of the net. And really, that's the difference between a good team and a mediocre team. You get the chances, you take them. There's Larison. Long ball for Brocky to chase. And if you think about it as well, Tommy, 
AC Milan have scored with virtually every chance created in the second half. And that's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. Donati, under pressure, did wonderfully well. Gattuso. Comes to Cristiano Zanetti. I mean, the way tactics are now in Serie A, when you have two good teams playing against one another, and they get the tactics right, what are you going to get? You're going to get no more, no more, I would say, than a half a dozen good scoring opportunities in any game. You get two, three and a half, you put them away, that's the difference. AC Milan got very few chances in the first half and uh, obviously didn't put any away, but in the second half, they've gotten, as you said, four or five chances and they've stuck the four or five, four of them in the back of the net. Expert finishing from Shevchenko twice, Contra and Inzaghi. Now, Contra's goal was something special, especially from a right full. Vivas for Inter. And well, Vivas and Brocchi in a pushing and shoving match. And the assistant referee, Claudio Puglisi, on this near side had an excellent view. Vivas has been at it all day, but I mean, it's not the first time. Seydorf and for Inter. Calon kept going. Aviante's there. Well, Vivas was perhaps fortunate. That's the assistant referee called for leniency. There are referees here in Italy and overseas who would immediately say red card when a player lifts his fists in that fashion. Yeah, but he, I think the reason why he took it into consideration is Brocky has really been pushing and shoving there since he got out on the field. So the referee said it was a kind of an exchange between two players, referee's assistant, and he just let it go. Contra for AC Milan with just over four minutes left. by Cristiano Zanetti. Hasn't featured at all in the game since coming on as a sub. This will be a very hard one for Inter to take. Yeah, it could be the ruination of their season yet. Larison. Support there from Brocchi. Now Shevchenko. And Javier Zanetti kicks it too far forward for his own good. The stuffing has been well and truly knocked out of Inter here by their city rivals. Maldini. And this is two in a row, like, I mean, they got such a drubbing the last day and now they're getting, you know, the score may not be bigger than the last day, but I think the embarrassment is going to be even worse because they were leading and led into half time. At least the last day they could turn around and say, hey, we were never in the game. Today they look like they were controlling the game and they, they let it get away from them in about 16 or 17 minutes. Brocky. Contra. Start for Alaves last season during the remarkable run all the way to the UEFA Cup final, only to lose to Liverpool. Gattuso. Now Donati. Touch being cheered by the AC Milan supporters, understandably. Sergio over on the left. The Inter throw this time. Adriano. He's never in a good position to control the ball. Gattuso. It's Costa Curta for AC Milan, and if it remains 4-1. AC Milan will pull level with Inter on the 14-point mark. What's more, Inter will drop to third on goal difference. Inter there by Contra. Brocchi trying the fancy stuff. Trying to play in Serginho, who can be a joy to watch. Ask him this man. They're all good players. They're all really good players. Very good technically player, technical players, and, and uh, they're difficult to mark out of a game. Adriano. This man's a joy to watch too, Adriano. Yes, superb close control up against both Calanze and Maldini. Approaching the final minute. Stoppage time still to be added on. Javier Zanetti. Self-belief has long since disappeared. 
far as Inter are concerned. They had AC Milan where they wanted them, leading 1-0, moving towards the hour mark. You hustle and bustle then, Gattuso and Vivas. I'm just wondering if, if Larison finally has been the, the key to AC Milan. They really have had a problem at the back, as we see Gattuso get hit, since Baresi has retired. They've had awful kinds of problems. They've given up very foolish goals, and uh, maybe Larison is going to be the same. You know, Patrick Anderson went to Barcelona, and he has really solidified that defence, and Larison looks like he's more or less done the same here for AC Milan, which could really be, as the season goes on, he's going to grow in strength and confidence, Derek. Cristiano Zanetti, there is Larison. Oof. Abiati indulging in a touch of Fabian Barthez like play. No, 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 no. <laughs> he got away with it. Barthez wouldn't get away with it. Well, he used to get away with oh, it. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Far more Barthez type of play. Fati Tarim just indicating that we will have three minutes of time added on for stoppages. Wasn't aware Fati Tarim was also the fourth official as well as being the AC Milan manager. But now you know you got we got a picture of it there. We had the proof. <laughs> he's entitled to play any role he wants after this well certainly as far as AC Milan fans are I don't think that vote of confidence is going to be any bother to him for a while this game over as a contest and what a remarkable performance by AC Milan these are always special occasions these derby fixtures the derby della Madonina the derby of the little Madonna, if you prefer, named after the statue, sits high on top of the city's Duomo Cathedral. The rivalry dates back to 1908. The first five matches all went AC Milan's way. This one will end in victory for Milan as well. But Callon's in for Inter, and a consolation goal. Mohamed Callon. It's his first league goal of the season the target twice against Vizsla Krakow in the UEFA Cup on Thursday but it won't affect the overall result in this derby well it's his 30th goal in 90 games in Serie A which is pretty good one in every three Abiati can't get down to it Maldini knocks the ball down Calon shows good determination good skill here and uh, he takes his goal very well Okan is the man who slips the ball inside Maldini just doesn't get enough of it and Kellon certainly does. Inter 2, AC Milan 4. Let's see if Inter can get another one. So time is against them. It's one more minute of stoppage time to go. Cristiano Zanetti. Seydorf. Adriano. Intelligent turn and the flick. Designed to release Seydorf. A Jekyll and Hyde performance this by Inter. And Mr. Hyde has reared his ugly head in the second half. Okan played on a quality ball seconds ago for Callon. Cristiano Zanetti. AC Milano just hanging around waiting on the final whistle to go here, which is not a very bright thing to do. Well, one of the most bizarre derbies we've witnessed in recent seasons. Inter led 1-0 as we move towards the 60-minute mark. But then four goals in 17 minutes by AC Milan. Dramatically changing the course of events. A 4-2 victory in the end, that consolation from Callon, counting for very little joy and vindication for Fatih Tarim. 4-2 win, and so they pull level with Inter on the 14-point mark. Well, in the 60th minute, this game was about to change. We're not sure we knew whether it was going to happen or not, but as the ball came across into the middle, watch Shevchenko make the nice run, he knocks it down. Now, Contra had come on at half-time, and he was really going to have a road to play in this game. Rui Costa fed that one across, but watch this, the free kick as Shevchenko was taken down. Free kick is quickly taken, Kalazadze, and look at that, Contra banked it up into the corner of the net. Great run by Contra, great speed to him, and what a pretty goal that was. Rui Costa set up the next one 
two as he slips it outside. Contra floats it into the middle. Guess who? Inzaghi knocks it down into the corner of the net. So the defense for Inter were falling apart at this stage. Inzaghi got himself into a good position. And then in the 78th minute, nice running again. Serginho plays the ball on a flatter serve. Chenko is there. He takes the main course and he smacks it home. 4-2 to AC Milan in the 250th Milan derby. They have pulled ahead of Inter on goal difference. Kievo are the shock leaders. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage here from Milan at the microphone. Tommy Smith alongside me, Derek Ray. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For all your football news, log on to soccernet.com. Good night from the San Siro.